about this like a couple of days afterwards and he had some information in his file mm -hmm. um, I think he fully intended to be back up here and to address that mm -hmm. so I didn't follow it up when I found out last week that he wasn't going to be here I was able to somehow find some references in his file um, there appears to be a couple of situations. Uh, there appears to be language in Article 7, Section 10 of the Illinois Constitution that says units of local government may contract and otherwise do associate, associate with other entities in any manner not prohibited by law, which is pretty broad. And then there is a case which I did have a chance to look at called um, Village of Sherman versus Village of Williamsville. It's an Illinois appellate case uh, out of the 4th District, which is where we're located. It's rather old, goes back to 1982. I'm advised that there really has not been a challenge to that case that basically allows villages to contract and do whatever is necessary. I'm willing if somebody says we don't have the legal authority to bring that to my attention. But my advice to the council tonight would be that on everything I've seen, I've talked to a couple lawyers, I've, I've done some local government law with the Central Water District and the like, and other villages I've represented, I have found nothing that says we do not have the authority to do that. I'll ask anybody that thinks that we don't to, to provide that proof as well. The proof I have says we do have the authority, and until somebody shows me differently, that's what I would stand on based upon this cursory background look of water district. There's not a lot of law on this particular point. Mm -hmm. Well, my understanding was that that was why Fosterberg dropped out. There was no statutory authority for them as a public body to move forward, so they dropped out. I'm not sure that's why they dropped out. I've talked that's what they stated yeah. that night I'm of their meeting, was that they talked, they consulted with their attorney, they found they had no statutory authority to move forward, so they dropped out. The person I've talked to <coughs> indicate that that's what they think, but I'm not gonna question what, what, their, what their attorney said. The information I have shows that the, the city does have that authority. So okay. I guess you get 10 lawyers in a room, you'll right. get five versus five, so right now, I think we do have it. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I said that's why you practice law. That's why they call it a practice. <laughs> okay. Okay, next. Um, is there any other questions regarding this? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move to the regional water concept update. I believe, Randy, you put that on the agenda? Yes. <clears throat> Last council meeting, a constituent of mine got up in public comment and mentioned that Foster already dropped out of the concept. I have never heard nothing official that Foster, even though I've been on the water ad hoc meetings all along, and back in June when we were doing all this, we were supposed to know the six feet solid numbers and go, going with this concept, because Carnival's in dire need of a water situation. You know, I've met with Foster at another meeting earlier in the year. They were looking at a concept three to five years out because they're under contract with American Water. I went to the meeting Thursday night to get just, I didn't say a word, just to observe what was going on. And the, and the guy running the meeting made the comment that Jerseyville Rural Water would be out of debt in three to five years. Nobody's in a dire situation that we are in for a water situation. Everybody's in a conceptual phase of this water. And it really concerns me when, they, when I saw Dorchester at the meeting and not Fosterburg. I, I believe Dorchester is part of the Gillespie Water District. And that concerns me that we're putting council money into going into other 
district and pulling their members out. It'd be like Gillespie getting mad at us and saying, hey, Carnival over water in three years, <coughs> we're going to go after you because their towers are close to their lake. I mean, are we as a council wanting to pick and choose different entities to rip out of their to come up with this regional concept? And at what cost? Dorchester has 175 citizens. I mean, I don't know how many people they have, but Joe, you made the comment that from Litchfield to Carlinville, you know, the debt service would kill us. Well, what would it cost from Shipman to Dorchester when you only have 175 customers? And that's people. I mean, I'm sure they don't have that many customers living in Dorchester. I mean, this whole concept, we have to boil it down to what's it going to cost our citizens? $20 per thousand gallon? I mean, the rate was two seventy five dollars when we had these four entities. We don't have the four entities in there yet, and we're six months later, and we're not even moving forward toward solving Carnival's water issue. I mean, I'm not saying Litchfield's our only option. We had Litchfield, we had Otter Lake, and we had the Silt Dam with the Army Corps of Engineers and Dredge Otter Lake. There's other options we have, but Carnival itself is in a dire situation for water. Unlike these other ones, they're under contract. I mean, we're coming up on our six month re review of this. I mean, I just think we need to look hard at ourselves and say, what's it going to cost our constituents? We have no clue who's in and how far the pipes are going to go and how long it's, how much it's going to cost us. We, we should all investigate what's it going to end up costing us our project. You know, we're, we're asking for the government, which is trillion dollars in debt, to put a $72 million project. And, and even if you did, that was based on Jerseyville. And Fosterburg and Carlinville usage is a six million gallon per day. You put Dorchester in, we don't need six million gallon. So is it a three million gallon plant? And then other people come in, then you have to build a plant bigger. I mean, this whole concept is so not solid in any way. It's, it could be two to three years before it ever becomes a reality of some kind of thing. Because Carnival got that much time to wait. Our lake is, is basically dead, Lake One. And we're moving back to that. I don't know where we're at even on that, that filtration system that we were going back in. And Lake 2 didn't have the worship. We've not had much water. So we all know, you guys have been on the council a lot longer than I have in, in different entities. And when this whole project got started, and Max did a wonderful job. I learned a lot from Max. But the concept started, it was part of me being on in 2014, was you guys were looking for a groundwater source. That's what it states in that document. You're looking for groundwater, not surface water, but groundwater. So the concept that we've looked at everything we have, but we were specifically targeting groundwater as the source we were going at in that first concept. So I mean, you got look. Everybody here has to say, what's it going to cost your constituents? You know, I'm, I'm just used to throw this show. This show came out at the 275, blended at rate, what we could get totally at that at that rate. I mean. We should at least be investigating this, but to take our $30,000 and then they go after another water district's entity, like Dorchester. I mean, that, that, what does that say to us as a part of We can tell us who, what entity we're going to grab whoever we can to create this regional concept? That's, that's, I, I don't feel we should be doing that as a city body or I mean, other governmental body uh, members to create this concept. Any other comments? Yes, Cindy? Um, since the agenda item is to give an update on the regional water concept, I would like to do that, if that would be okay. Sure. Go ahead. Um, first of all, I would agree that Carlinville is in a very dire situation for water and that perhaps some of the other communities aren't in as dire a situation as we are, which is why it's always shocking to me how um, adamant some members are at fighting against a majority vote that was taken in this room to pursue a certain path of solving that problem. That just is very disheartening to me because we all agree that we have a very serious problem and the only thing we disagree on is which way we should go and a majority vote has been taken. So that will always baffle me because I believe in our form of government and I believe that it has already spoken. So um, Randy, I respect that you don't agree with that. I do, and I respect that you have a differing view on where we should go from here. And I have sat in this chair and felt that way about other things too, but that is our form of government, and a majority has said this is the direction that we're going to go. And um, if you really believe that our circumstances are dire, and I do, 
the one I don't understand, throwing, um, throwing our efforts against each other versus throwing our efforts in the direction of, assault, of solving the problem for thousands of people. So that's all I had to say about that. Um, we did meet November 30th, 2017 at five o'clock in Jerseyville. Um, there were, as Randy said, he was there. Uh, Alderman Toon was there. Alderman Heigert was there. There were members of the community also. Um, we had a meeting. We voted to hire an attorney. <coughs> we accepted our bylaws. We approved our minutes. Uh, we drew lots for terms. Carlinville will have a term of two years. They want to reappoint a person in two years. That's the person they're choosing. Uh, we assigned officers. President is Alan Deven Devonport of Jerseyville Rural Water. The vice president is myself from Carlinville. Secretary Treasurer is Sue Campbell from Dorchester. We authorized uh, the attorney to file the articles of organization and we adjourned. Um, there was public comment. Um, and what I would say about this also is that not very long ago, I sat in the audience and wondered why everybody was always fighting and being argumentative. And as a constituent, just sitting in the audience, I found that very unnecessary. And I, I made some judgments about some of those attitudes until I now sit on this side of the table and I see some of the things that go on that are very unnecessary. Um, I understand that we posted the meeting as an open meeting. Um, and I would say that I have to, I want to commend the mayor because she respects the process that we're trying to go through. And she did not come to the meeting out of, I believe, respect for the council's decision, but also out of, um, out of respect for me in that she and the council have appointed me to this position. And she's trying to, you know, maybe have some confidence in that process. I don't know. Um, I just don't understand why it has to be this difficult to do what we said we were going to do, solve the water problem. So, um, yes, we are moving forward. We do have a next step to take. I don't have a time or place of the next meeting. Um, I think that strides are being made to try to correct this problem. Is Dorchester a small user? Yes, of course they are. Um, there is benefit in seeing how a user connects to others and how those things could be helpful in the future. And as far as creating a situation where we pull users from other communities, nobody's got a problem with Litchfield doing it. So I would just say, if we're okay with being pulled to Litchfield, I don't see a problem with us providing a reliable and, and dependable and good water source to other communities who are interested in having that for their uh, community members. So that's the update that I have for you. Okay. Um, my, my response is, is Litchfield's not pulling anybody from another entity. We are our own entity. You know, would be possibly joining Litchfield and the reason that I keep bringing this back up, and I'll just mention this real briefly, Woodward and Kern were shot down by the previous council, and they came back and got back. Okay? So, I mean, things do change, things do happen. But we are sitting at a Litchfield that got a right way to go under the Interstate 55 with a pipeline. Okay? At a certain point, they're going to go ahead and move and put that pipeline underneath there. Now, if they don't move, put a big enough pipeline for us to service us, that option's off the table for us down the road. So then if we start to come back and they say it's $12 per thousand gallon, and we say, well, that's way too much. We don't want to do that concept now. We've already missed the boat over here. All I'm saying is we should explore the other options at the same time. And Arbor Lake. Arbor Lake was a $2 million to repurb Arbor Lake. And it's in the Cooking County. I mean, it's, you know, there's other options on the table. It's my question is if we don't tell this show that we're even interested and they throw that line underneath that lake, that thing, there's this one will not be an option for us at all. Okay. Did you have the idea? Yes, I did. Um, Cindy, I respect the position that you've been put in because it's hard. I want you to know that. I come to the meeting because I don't get the information and it upsets me. 
when I ask for it, I don't get the information that I am required to have for the people in my district or in the city. I want to know, for the taxpayers, this water comes to us, and most of the people I know can't afford the bills they have now. They are going to Catholic charities and other entities to help pay their bills. At what price are we going to go after this water, and who's going to get hurt to get it? First of all, I don't recall you asking me any questions that I didn't answer, and I don't recall you asking me any questions, period. You're so You're that's mean. fine. If you, maybe I missed the question. I'm not sure, but I have brought information as requested to the council. If you have a question that you'd like me to answer, I would happily answer it. The last time I asked you a question, I was told that we would be a voter and a part owner of this water district and we won't be a part owner of this water district. Then I would challenge you to say who the owners are if they are not the community members who are represented on that board. The attorney spoke at the meeting and stated that we would not be the owners. Was he lying? We are not owners in the sense that we assume their debts under our name. We're customers. You are... We are paying customers. I'm not gonna argue semantics with you. You either have a vote on the board and you what if you create, don't have the money to pay for the higher priced water? Would you like me to finish? Okay. Thank you. I can't give you a price per thousand for water under this concept. I can't. And I do not believe that we have an accurate price per thousand for Litchfield. And I understand that people want that. Um, I fundamentally disagree with that concept of just saying we're not going to solve this problem and and be a voting member of the board we're not going to solve the problem on our own let's just buy from Litchfield. i fundamentally disagree with that and i don't want to do that so um that these votes have already been taken there is nothing in our in our code book that allows us to keep bringing this back to the floor until it goes through the proper chain so i don't understand i i really don't and maybe i'm missing something here but I think we have meeting rules and we have um, ordinances to govern our meetings so we don't do things like this. Go behind each other and create a problem so that we can't get anything done. We revisit issues on the floor that we've already revisited 10 times here and three times in Jerseyville. So I say let's obey the rules of our governmental structure and let's move forward. And if you want to bring it back in six months, bring it back. We'll vote again. We'll see where we go. But until then, let's respect the structure. Okay, any other questions? Yes, Just a comment. I do respect our government. I also respect my constituents. I respect every single water user in Carlinville, and I respect their right to have a good quality product at a reasonable rate. I also understand what Randy is saying. I know we voted, but if you take a vote on something, and then down the road, you realize that maybe this isn't going to be the best situation. When we voted, we weren't sure about Jerseyville. Fosterburg was in, Jersey Rural Water was in, and Carmenville was in. There was a meeting in April that I don't believe you were at, it was a water board meeting, that the question was asked point blank of Brian Mitchell, what will happen if Jerseyville drops out? And his response to that committee was, then we are done. We can't afford to move forward, we're done. So to keep charging forward on something, if it doesn't quite make sense, doesn't make sense. Why not consider all the options before we close the door? Like Randy said, once that pipe goes in under 55, they're not going to drill and put a bigger pipe just because we've changed our minds, maybe. We can ask them, you know, to put in a big enough pipe that maybe it would accommodate us. If we find out that what we have voted to move forward with isn't going to work. If we find out that our water is going to cost us double, even if it's just double what we're paying per thousand. You ready? My only question, Cindy. 
six months would be December 19th. That's why this is December 4th meeting. June 19th is when we voted on it in the, in the meeting. So you're real close to the six month window as far as bringing it back up to council. Not tonight's vote, but just put the thought out there to everybody. Are we going down the right path? Um, okay, Cindy. I understand that very likely we will come to council December 9th, December, no, it won't be, it'll be next, January, whatever. First meeting in January. We'll come and it will be on the agenda to vote again on this very issue. I understand that. And, and until, the way that I view it, and I don't, I, I respect what you said. I do know that you're listening to people who are concerned, and I do believe that. And I believe that you're concerned about the cost. I do believe that. I believe every person who sits here is. We have a difference of opinion on what that means and how we want to go about addressing that issue. If I believe for one minute that it would be um, cost, that the cost would be astronomical and you know I would be hurting members of my community, there's absolutely no way that I would go over there and sit there and try to work through this situation. Not for anything in the world would I do that. So I believe that there is still hope for this I do believe that. I believe that there are interested parties. I also believe that Litchfield um, probably has other municipalities that they have approached. Um, so I think they're gonna probably set themselves up to be okay to sell water to somebody else. I don't think that we are gonna be the make or break. Um, I don't know that for sure, but um, I think that they can protect their own interests very well. I don't think that we need to protect their interests. Um, but I would also say that, yes, Jerseyville has not committed. The city of Jerseyville has not committed to this project. I, that is the truth. Um, other communities are showing interest but have not committed to the project. But until the council has a vote that overturns us moving in this direction or, um, you know, tells me to do a different thing, it is my sworn duty to my constituents to do what the council's majority vote has has spoken to do, and that's what I want to do. That's what I believe is the right thing for us. Sarah, I think you had your hand up. Well, <clears throat> Randy said they had, uh, there's a big book out of all the studies they did, and they did study Otter Lake. That was part of that whole study. And they studied every aquifer, everything close. I mean, the book is just big, and somebody, you people need to go through it and read it, which I have. We did. But it was studied. And you said it wasn't looked into, and it was. And as a council, you weren't on the council, we decided there again not to go that route because of whatever the conditions were at the time. Now, the part of the trouble I have with Litchfield is Litchfield just threw some figures out there. They didn't tell me what it was going to cost to get the lines down. They didn't, they didn't study anything. They just, like, made some figures and said, this is what it's going to be. Well, I don't really believe that those figures were exactly once you put your lines down and once you all do it, none of that was discussed in that. So those figures all changed. So what you're throwing out there as this is how much this water's cost, that's not how much it's gonna cost because we have all this infrastructure to get to Litchfield. So to me, if you really want us to be interested in Litchfield, get Litchfield to study what it's gonna cost to get me water. And that's not happening. So I'm not really wanting to go that way. Okay, are we still have conversation on the floor? Yes, yes please. Yes. Um, first off, I'm not worried about Litchfield making money or getting by or growing their water plant or anything. This, my concern is not about Litchfield, it's about Carlinville. And as far as the study, the city of Carlinville paid for the study <clears throat> that was done for uh, groundwater and they did, Max told us here in this room, since I've been elected, Max said he was directed to go for groundwater. So when Litchfield came in, they brought a contract that they will sell the water at whatever was on the contract, 270. But we would be responsible for getting that the water line to from Route 16 to Carlinville. That was the piece that we requested the money to study. Since we spent so much money studying the groundwater, <coughs> to me, it would be smart to study the Litchfield proposition. 
what are we going to, uh, we're going to be out a few thousand dollars, but at least we would know the cost involved. I asked a question, and uh, it was in October, I believe it was the October meeting, <clears throat> that I had read the minutes of one of the meetings in Jerseyville that stated in the minutes that Carlinga would be, res that each entity would be responsible for the water line from the point of connection to their community. So I asked that question, have you guys figured out what those costs are going to be? And what's the difference between us paying for shipment to Carlinville or Litchfield to Carlinville? We don't know those numbers. We, until we study them, we don't know them. So why wouldn't we spend a little bit of money to find out which is the smartest way for Carlinville to go? Okay. Any other questions? Well, my other question is, why you allocate all 30000 to this one project when we could study both, just so we know when it's coming up again? I, mean, I think because we voted not to do that. All right, I have one more question about the district itself. Um, we were told the other night that Dorchester has approved $10,000 towards the project. Carlingo, we've got 30000 on the table again, is that right? Mm -hmm. And then Jersey Rural Water, do you know how much they've committed to? I would have to look. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't have that. No, that's all right. I, I, I've never heard Jersey Say, I, I know they do have a, I, I have heard a figure, but I don't want to say the wrong thing, right. and I don't have anybody. But I would be happy to get that information. Okay. Any, other, any other questions? Okay. Let's move on then to our next item on the agenda. And Cindy, that comes back to you um, for the push we release the funds. Um, at the meeting, we also discussed that um, we felt it would be more fair in the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish if everybody releases the same amount of funds at the same time um, so we don't have a situation where certain people are putting everything in the pot at the same time so we would like um, each community involved each entity involved to release three thousand dollars of the promised money to the illinois Alluvial regional water company um, so i'm asking um, that we release three thousand uh, dollars to match that through the three thousand dollars that will hopefully be voted on to be released by Dorchester and Jerseyville Rural Water. Um, I know those funds have already been allocated by the city, so I would make a motion that we release three thousand dollars of the thirty thousand um, to the Illinois Alluvial Regional Water Company. Then are you making that into a yes? A, that is a motion. Into a motion. Okay. A second. Okay, motion has been made by Alderman Campbell that we release $3,000 to the uh, water concept. Um, and it has been seconded by um, Alderman Oswald. Is there any conversation on or any comment on this? Cindy, what is the uh, 9000 going to be spent on the legal fees? And um, the it will be initial cost. So yes, there will be some legal fees. Um, whatever costs there are to establishing ourselves as far as filing our articles of organization. I'm not sure there's a cost associated with that. There are usually some small costs associated with filing your paperwork and such with the state to establish yourself as a business. Um, right now, those are the expenses. But again, I must reiterate that this is not a subcommittee of the city of Carlinville, so they will not be coming to us and asking what they can spend that $3,000 on. We've committed that money, we've released it to them. It's no longer ours, it will be theirs. And I will not be coming and bringing um, updates on how they spent that money. So, comfortable um, or not, that's the structure, and that's what I'm asking. Okay, is it my understanding, Cindy, that should we, um, should something not happen, that that $3,000 would, would be going back to, um, for that grant? If that something grant. does happen, it's okay. my understanding that that will come back to us. So. Okay, any questions? Any other questions on this? Yes. Brent, what does quasi-public mean? Uh, it's, it's a hybrid of being a private entity versus public and somewhat in between. Um, 
the term of art that says you're you're pub you're you're not a public but you're not a private. Does it if you're partially public? Do you have to follow the same rules as a public entity? Well, if you if you're incorporated, you do. Yeah. When their attorney spoke before they had hired him, the same gentleman came and spoke at a meeting, and he said that this organization will be a quasi-public, non-profit, private organization. So, well, what does that uh, mean? I would give you as an example that I would say is, for instance, the Central Macoupin County Rural Water District, of which I'm the attorney. I, I would consider us quasi because we incorporated as a water district. It's a private board. It's registered with the state. And we got funding from uh, USDA. So in, in a way, we're both. Because we're a water entity, we have customers, we have a board of directors, we have to file with the state. So it's, it's, it's that kind of a hybrid. Are you subject to FOIA and Open Meeting Act? Yes. Okay. So would this entity then be the same? I'm going to assume so. I, I don't know. I mean, again, I don't like to answer legal questions with yes, no's, and absolutes, particularly when you've got You know, I should have seconds. stopped him and asked him, but I, I was an observer at that meeting, so I wasn't part of it. For the most part, any any organization that has any type of a public type funding would be under FOIA. Can I speak? Can I speak? No, no um, just point of order. Um, my understanding is if the if this entity does not form um, or is disbanded, we don't get the money back. If it does form, we, get the money we, we do get the money. That is not what was said at the meeting. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that not what was said at the meeting Thursday? Okay. I'm so sorry. I, I would I, it would be great I, I I don't think Dylan's rule allows this I understand Brent what Brent said I think it would be great if we somehow put a stipulation on this money that this was ever found to be an illegal or improper creation our involvement with the creation of a nonprofit that we would get that money back from that that we would get that money back so I don't know how you want to do that I don't even know if that's possible but I think I think you're risking at this point. You're throwing money at this. I don't think it's legal. Do we want to add that in? Why? Why would you say that? <coughs> what, what, what's your because be, for well, that? because it's not there. There's no authority for a, a a city to create, be part of creating a nonprofit. Company. I think that's where we have a different. I understand opinion. that, and I'm saying that's going to come out. You know, the reason it's going to come out, you're going to be applying for grants. That's not going to survive a grant process if that isn't 100% legal. Okay, Cindy, go ahead. I just wanted to add that I mean, I, I know there's some of this that must have taken place before I was elected, but Gateway Regional Water does this, they have federal funding. They have municipalities on their board. They have muni they have municipal board members who serve on that company's board. They're doing exactly what we're trying to do. So I am very confused at why if this truly the hang up that everybody has. How did we get this far with looking at them as our example and everybody seems so confused? I don't understand this. I, my, from my perspective, I just don't think it's been challenged yet. That's all I'll say. Okay. We've got a motion in a second already. Yes. Correct. We're forward with that. All right. Yes, we have a motion to go ahead and do the three thousand uh, dollars for the regional uh, to apply to the regional water uh, concept. Okay. Uh, Clerk, call the roll. Yanni. Yes. Bill Brett. No. Brockmeyer. Yes. Campbell. Aye. Jerisel. Aye. Tim. No. Oswald. Aye. Tiger. No. Okay, right. motion is carried by the three, and uh, we'll be able to send the uh, $3,000. Uh, you'll be able to report back that the $3,000 has um, go to the uh, study or to the uh, entity. Okay, um, next on the agenda, I'm going to uh, read a letter I have that is addressed to the mayor and city council.
This letter is from Bert Manny and Kane. It's dated December the 4th to near Marin City Council members. <coughs> As of the end of December 2017, I am retiring from the practice of law and will no longer serve as attorney for the city of Carmel. Since I will be gone all of December and basically unavailable, I am resigning as city attorney effective immediately. I have practiced law in Carmel <coughs> for 41 years since I graduated from law school in 1976. I have been fortunate to serve as city attorney for a total of 25 years during the mayoral administrations of Pipilotti, Jack Pascoe, Fred Dimuzio, and Deanna Dimuzio. I have seen council members come and go, and have been a part of many accomplishments of the city council. I am most appreciative of being a part of Deanna Dimuzio's administration and being involved in numerous progressive accomplishments for the betterment of Carlinville. I remain very truly yours, Rick Burkman. With that, uh, Rick is, uh, has retired immediately. This uh, will be effective now. And uh, Brent, would you like to say something on behalf of your firm? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, uh, tough to do. I know because of the uh, circumstances yes. which have proceed. But uh, Deanna has, you know, our firm has been the city attorneys. I've been doing most of the background work and reference to public work, and that works out well. Um, I was given the opportunity to continue. I do not have the time. I would have to clone myself over. I have a busy litigation practice that requires a lot of work, and the council requires a lot of work. Um, I looked at uh, bills from the yeah, past several years. There's a lot of time. There's a lot of time. And I've been city attorneys up and down this uh, county. Stone, not all of <coughs> Excuse me. It's not like the old days. It's tough. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of issues going on. Uh, and I don't have the time. I'd love to, but something would have to suffer. And I can't do that and still maintain and give the city its, its highest uh, time. And Rick virtually devoted everything he had to the city. He didn't do courtroom work, hadn't done courtroom work for 10 years, and vice versa. So I appreciate the, the offer. And if I had two or three other different partners or associates or whatever, uh, that would probably be a different story. In fact, I know it would be. But uh, I appreciate doing that and the offer. I just literally don't have the time. And I wanted to explain that to the council and to the public so that they didn't draw some irrational, psychotic reasons for, well, why, why didn't Brent Payne with why, would, why didn't he jump in there and just like his partner did? I don't have the time to do it and do the city's work and the other ongoing litigation that I have, and both of them would suffer. They just would. And so therefore, uh, I think the council has a, a name that they're going to hear, and I fully endorse that. Let's give, um, let's give Brad and Rick a great big hand. Appointment for city attorney will be Dan O'Brien, and I would like to entertain a. Um, I'd like to make that motion, and I would like to have a second. Mayor, I would move that we bring your appointment with Dan O'Brien as city attorney. Okay, motion has been made and seconded uh, that we uh, appoint Dan O'Brien as our city attorney. Uh, the clerk, if there's no nothing on the floor, um, the clerk will call the roll. Blackmire? Yes. Dorisel? Aye. Hygert? Yes. Tim? Yes. Oswald? Aye. Downey? Yes. Campbell? Aye. Gilbert? Yes. Okay, motion is carried 8 to 0. Mr. O'Brien, you are now the Colonel City Attorney. <laughs> Thank you.
Now, you can either join in and have the hot seat now. Or you can <laughs> I think Brent's got it nice and warm. <laughs> you should stay there. You can, you can come on up and join us if you'd like. Um, that's up to you. I think I'll let Prince enjoy that seat a few minutes. Right. Well, with that, well, they're paying me for Well, no, they're not. I know. They're off the clock. They're off the clock now. All right. With that, we have two more items on the agenda, and Sarah's going to handle that for us. Okay. As we do every year, we have to uh, have an ordinance for the tax levy, 